Let's have a discussion now about the force and torque that is acting on a dipole placed in an electric field. To begin with, uh, let's assume that the electric field is constant. It's a uniform electric field, such as the one that you find inside a capacitor, just for simplicity. So uh, with this electric field, if you place a dipole in this electric field, remember that the dipole has a positive and a negative charge, the distance uh, between the negative and the positive charge, let's call it d, vector d. And let's say that we place the dipole in such a way that this vector d makes an angle theta with the direction of the electric field. Let's uh, start with the torque and see if there will be a torque acting on this dipole. First thing to realize is that there are forces acting on each one of the charges of the dipole. On the positive charge, you have a force that points in the same direction as the direction of the electric field, so that's the uh, vector F plus. And on the negative charge, we have a force that is acting in the opposite direction as the direction of the electric field. That's because the charge is negative. That's the vector F minus. Both of these forces are going to have a torque about the center of the dipole. The torque of the positive force of F plus is equal to the magnitude of the force times the distance between the point where the force is applied, which is the location of the particle plus Q, and the center of the rotation, which is going to be the center of the dipole. So that distance is D divided by 2. And we have to multiply by the sine of the angle that the vector that goes from the center of rotation to the location of the force makes with the force vector. So in this case, that's the same as the angle between the vector d and the vector f plus. So that is the angle theta that we specified before. This torque has a negative sign because if the force f plus was the only force acting on this dipole, you see that the rotation would be clockwise. The clockwise direction is associated with a negative sign in the torque. For the torque of the force F minus, we have the magnitude of the force multiplied by the distance between the force and the center of rotation, that is d divided by 2, and the sine of, again, the angle theta that we specified before. This is because the electric field is uniform and points in the same direction at the location of minus q and at the location of plus q. The sign is again negative because the torque of F minus is also clockwise. So there is a net torque that we obtain by adding the torques of uh, torque plus and torque minus. They're both negative. Both have the same magnitude. Since the force F plus and F minus are the same, the electric field is the same. So we can say that the net torque is equal to minus F the electric force acting on each one of the charges times d, the length of the dipole, times the sine of the angle between the dipole and the electric field. Now if we replace the uh, force being the charge times the electric field, we can write the torque as minus qd times e sine theta. We're just regrouping q with d. qd we have defined it before as being the dipole moment. So we can write the expression for the torque in terms of the dipole moment as minus P, the dipole moment, times E, the electric field, times the sine of theta. Now notice what happens in, uh, in different situations. Uh, let's take a look at the dependence of the torque with the angle theta. The equation that we just arrived is that the torque is equal to minus the dipole moment multiplied by the electric field magnitude times the sine of theta. What happens if theta is equal to zero? If theta is equal to zero in this equation, we see that the sine of zero will be zero, therefore the torque on the dipole will be zero. So that's the situation when the dipole is oriented along the direction of the electric field, the dipole moment vector P is pointing in the same direction as E, therefore in this uh, situation, the torque is zero. It means that if you place the dipole in this orientation, the dipole would not rotate. It will not deviate from this orientation. But what if the angle theta is bigger than zero? 
then our equation tells us that the torque is going to be negative. P is a positive number, E is a positive number. If theta is bigger than zero, then the sine of theta is bigger than zero, and therefore the torque, because of the minus sign in front of the equation, it's negative. So that is the situation where the dipole is pointing in an angle theta positive above the direction of the electric field, and the torque is negative. It's a clockwise torque. This means that the torque in this situation tries to rotate the dipole towards the theta equals zero angle. It tries to align the dipole with the electric field when theta is positive. Now, if theta is negative, the equation tells us that the torque is going to be positive. This is the situation when theta is negative. The dipole moment is below the direction of the electric field, negative theta, and the torque is a positive quantity, which means that it is a counterclockwise torque. So in this configuration, once again, the torque tries to align the dipole with the electric field. It tries to rotate back the dipole towards theta equals zero. So from this behavior, we can conclude that a dipole placed in an electric field experiences a torque that always tries to align the dipole with the electric field. For any uh, configuration, for any initial uh, orientation of the dipole that you choose, the torque would always try to make the dipole align, get aligned with the electric field. Normally there will be oscillations of the dipole around the equilibrium point, but if in any realistic situation these oscillations will decay, we die away until the um, dipole is oriented with the electric field. Now what about the net force on a dipole? Well the answer is it depends whether there's going to be a net force or not it will depend on the electric field in which the dipole is uh, placed. In case one, the electric field is uniform. So if you place an electric dipole in a uniform electric field, then the dipole we know that it would uh, get oriented in the direction of the electric field. And if we look at the forces acting on the charges of the dipole, the force on the negative charge will be opposite to the direction of the electric field. The force on the positive charge is in the same direction as the electric field and with the same magnitude if the electric field is uniform. Both forces are equal to Q times E. That tells you that the net force acting on the dipole in a uniform electric field is going to be zero. The F plus force pulling the dipole to the right is cancelled out by the F minus force pulling the dipole to the left. So in case one, when the electric field is uniform, the dipole experiences no net force, but it does experience a net torque that tries to align it with the electric field. This is the case when E is uniform. Case two is when E is not uniform. Simplest case of a non-uniform field is the one produced by a point charge. If we place a dipole in a field like this, we do know that the dipole is going to rotate until it is aligned with the uh, electric field in, in the neighborhood of the dipole. But once it gets aligned, notice the force is acting on the dipole. Clearly the force acting on the negative charge is pointing left, the one on the positive charge is pointing right, but because the negative charge is closer to the point charge plus Q, then F minus has a bigger magnitude than F plus. Due to that, the net force on the dipole in this situation would be not zero. It would be, in the picture, we see that it would be negative. It would be, the dipole would be attracted towards the positive uh, Q charge. So for the case, of a non-uniform field, we have concluded that there will be a net force on the dipole and there will be a net torque also. And talking about electric fields and dipoles, I recently found a TED talk given by 
Bill Doyle, which deals with a new uh, cancer treatment that uh, is done with applying electric fields to the tumor. So the basic idea, you can go to TED Talks, obviously, and watch the talk, the talk, which I think is very interesting. But let me just give you a basic idea on what's the connection with what we just uh, discussed with uh, torque and uh, electric fields and dipole moments. So the idea of the talk is the following. When you have a cancer cell, the nucleus, the chromosomes are inside the nucleus, as you know. And when the cell is ready to reproduce, one of the uh, things that happens is that the cell membrane disappears. So all the chromosomes inside the membrane are now in the middle of the cell. And the idea is that for the cell to reproduce, half of the set of chromosomes has to end up in one side of the cell, and the other half has to end up in the other side of the cell. So to divide the chromosomes, what happens is that a certain kind of proteins that are polar so they have one side of the protein is positive, the other side of the protein is negative. These polar proteins start forming filaments. The proteins attach to each other according to the charge, positive with negative, and they form, end up forming a network of sort of tentacles, like a scaffolding, that now the chromosomes use to move away from the nucleus. So the chromosomes basically climb on those tentacles and they're pulled away from the center. Half of the chromosomes go one way, half of the chromosomes go the other way. So when, when the chromosomes have uh, accumulated on one side and on the other side, then the cell begins the division. Now for cancer cells, the cell division happens at a much higher rate than a normal cell. So if you were able to find a way to disrupt this process, then uh, that would be a, way, a good way to treat a cancer. So the idea is exploding the fact that these polar molecules in the presence of an electric field will tend to be oriented in the direction of the electric field. Now for these tentacles to form, it is crucial for those uh, molecules to be able to attach to each other according to their polarity. So if you apply an intense electric field to the cell, what happens is that when the cell is ready to start forming the, the structure with the tentacles, those molecules, those polar molecules, are going to be disrupted by the electric field and they want to, want to be aligned with the electric field. So now the molecules, instead of reaching for each other, they simply sit there aligned with the electric field that has been applied to them. So the tentacle structure doesn't develop or is severely disrupted and without that tentacle structure the chromosomes are not able to be separated and the cell division process is uh, severely disrupted. So um, as I said this is a new kind of therapy I think it's just beginning uh, there's some very promising results and uh, that, as you can see that's an application of um, electric fields and dipoles.